you might be looking at the best damn featherweight in the entire world. T Shite, LA's finest, Brian Ortega on the show, getting me fired up already for UFC 266, of course, next Saturday, September 25th, Las Vegas. Uh, B Ortega, bro, it's been a long time coming to get you back in the cage. The storyline with featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky has taken many waves and turns. I think it's going to happen September 25th. What, what are the feels like right now? Let's, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's a journey, man. You know, I feel like I've been here before already where you basically train hard, something happens, then something else happens, um, and you're locked in with an opponent. You know, it's not like you, there's no one else besides him who has a belt, so there's really no one else to fight if the belt is what you're looking for. Ultimately, I feel like that's what a lot of fighters are, are fighting for, to be the world champion. So that's why I do it. So we got locked in with each other. We have been on, a, you know, like just little weird things that happen in the fight game. But finally, come what, two weeks already, we're, we're finally going to make this happen. You know, I pray yeah. and hope that nothing ugh, happens again and <laughs> ends up into a weird story. Uh, so you were supposed to meet Volkanovski, of course, at UFC 260 in March, but the delay did open up the opportunity to coach the ultimate fighter uh, opposite him. There, there's, some, you know, some potential benefits in that. Would you have rather have already fought him at this point? Or do you look at this as, you know, that's how life was supposed to go and you embrace the positives? No, things, things happen for a reason. Uh, maybe it wasn't time to fight him yet. Um Maybe it wasn't time for him to fight me yet. Whatever the reason is, it happens. Um, I always say, don't complain, just adjust. Simple as that. We got lucky and got a call to do the Ultimate Fighter show, and we did it. It was either go home and leave empty-handed or get on this Ultimate Fighter show, which few fighters have done, and try to make the best of it, giving your guys a situation, and we did. And we made the best of it. We had fun. Uh, got to coach people, got to have interesting experience in life, right? To meet these people and, and train with them and, you know, be side by side with them every day for six weeks. So that was a great experience. That was something that I'll forever have in my mind. So that was, that was beautiful. And now we went back home and then we started training again. You know, I got a chance to talk to you ahead of the original date of this fight, uh, a little more than a week out. And, bro, you were on some kind of intense feeling at that time. I mean, it was like, yo, either this guy's going to win by first-round knockout or or he might have went crazy. Um, it was is both. The, <laughs> is the feel – I mean, you know, how do you compare the training camps now? Is the feeling different now? I mean, you, you can look back and say you were ready for some shit back then, man. I mean, I'm still ready for some shit. You know, it ain't going nowhere until we until we fight that, you know, we're we're in some shit. Um I don't know. I just when you train for so long, you become more comfortable with the idea of the opponent. So it's just like, dude, I just I've been ready. Like, you know, I had that initial like I was in my mind, you know, and a lot of things, and I still am, but it's just, it, I don't know, it's different now. Is there it's, a point ahead of a fight when, when the, when the, when you flip that switch, like what actually happens where you go from civilian to, you know, I got nothing on my mind, but my opponent. That goes typically during fight week for me. Sometimes I can last time we're like a week out or somewhere around this, or it was like, like a week, a week and a half is typically where the switch goes on and it goes to like, hey, we've done the hard work, we've done everything. And now we have to, uh, now we have to mentally clock in. And uh, without taking them up, without taking much of your mental space where you're stressed out, right? But it's just time to focus, dial in, try to remember every single thing so you don't forget so you don't miss a beat don't miss a step um and get to it 
you know, the ultimate fighter opportunity. I mean, it gave you and Mr. Alexander Volkanovsky, uh, the fine decorated champion, a lot of time together, whether it been during filming, the, the, the plethora of interviews that you guys have done together on television. What do you take from all of those close-ups? Because, you know, I've never seen you in this type of trash talk, you know, certainly not on this level before. So what do you take from that experience mentally against him? Uh, that wasn't trash talk. That was just, yeah, speaking facts. <laughs> yeah, I was just speaking facts. But yeah, I, I I think he dislikes me. I don't I don't I don't know why. I have an idea, but nevertheless, I have to do my job. Okay. We go in okay. there. I do my job. You know, I've already let him know exactly how I feel about him. Um, and that's it. You know, the level of trash talk is it's whatever. You know, it's uh. Yeah. So when he says, uh, you know, I learned in the tough house that Ortega doesn't have the same fight IQ that I do. When he says you were fake all throughout that filming, you just brush that that off. And just. He's so short, his words can't even come up to me. <laughs> You're like, miss me with that. I appreciate that. Uh, we can't <laughs> lie here, man. You, your level of star value name recognition it, it went to a new level with the 2018 title fight against max uh, holloway in which despite defeat you know we talked about it you, you gave your heart your soul you were willing to risk it all since then um we see in commercials we see you um you know partnering up with with body armor the official sports drink of the ufc uh i'm sure you got the yeah, there it is there it is right there um has has this level of fame changed you at all no, if anything, I've just learned to to embrace it. You know, opportunities are given to you in life and you embrace them. You know, these are deals that we've talked about with my agents and my managers. And we say, hey, is this good for your career and your life? And we say, yes. Is it going to be a distraction? Is it going to be this? Is it worth? We take a lot of calculations with every step that we make and we do. Ultimately, it's everything's all good, you know, um, Success is the the movement. The cool part about your backstory that I love is that you you found success in the cage seemingly before like you were ready for it. What I mean by that is, you know, I see the quotes where you say, I didn't know what nutrition was. I, you know, I'm eating what I want. So, you know, now you're living, I, I'm assuming the, the Spartan champion lifestyle ahead of this. How important then is like, for example, the relationship with body armor and that transition you made from guy just winging it, who's having great success to now living it champion mindset 24 seven. Well, it's, it's, it's become a lifestyle, you know, it's become a lifestyle uh, where things in your life are now it's it's just different you know before i opened the fridge and it was whatever i can get my hands on you know now i have uh food in there that is designed and meant for a purpose i have water bottles con like my my fridge is all water bottles and food there's not one thing that you'll see in there that's like coca-cola or soda or uh juice like nothing is just is different when i open when I open the fridge, there's nothing but good things around me. No matter where I go in my life, like, you know, everything is shipped everywhere. So when it comes to nutrition and health and hydration, like I'm, I'm well taken care of that. Like my sponsors, my people, like my people take care of me. That like, that's a good feeling to have knowing that you work hand in hand with the people who you sign with. And not only because it's a deal, but because is someone who legitimately looks out for you, takes care of you. And this is before the Max Holloway fight. They stay with me. They stay, you know, typically sponsors drop athletes, right? They lose whatever. Like these are people who I've connected with, made a, made a, a relationship with. And time to time, they show me that they have my back. And now when I live my life, it, it's just, is unique to see me legitimately brand my life with the company. And then the, the way you move, because you have water bottles, all of us have water bottles. Mine just have the logo of the people that back me up. Imagine the water bottle that you buy has your back. 
shit, <laughs> I'm winning. You know what I'm saying? I, I look at it like perspective, right? It's a level of, in my opinion, success. It's something that I'm happy. And then it, and we build this relationship and shit, you know, we make money and we get paid. There it is. There it is. You represent them. They represent you. Uh, you talked in 2020 about getting rid of that rock star lifestyle. And that has been a big part of your transition. Uh, you know, how, how, how wild and crazy did it get? Is that more of an ego thing or is that a, a, you know, no, it got, it got wild. It got wild. I, I was wild for a bit for, for a good amount. Um, some things I'd rather choose not to really talk about, you know, uh, but it, it, it got a little wild. Now I'm, I'm settled, you know, uh, now I'm, you know, now I, I've changed my, my outlook, you know, I'm either with my kids or my girl or training. It, it's just, I had to just taper down a little bit. After this fight, you know, come, I won the belt. I have to find a good, uh, happy medium to where I can do these things still in a healthy way. I mean, I get, no I'm Mexican, you know what I'm saying? Like, we like to drink and party and have fun. Like, it's, I mean, I, and that's any human being, right? And then when you're allowed unlimited booze and everyone's like, you know, it, it's, it's easy to dive in there. But then I, you have to, like, if, at least for me, I have to remind myself, like, hey, man, you have to, like, this is your downfall if you keep it up. Sure, yeah. I certainly respect making that change and making that commitment. And, you know, there's no blueprint on how to be a celebrity. You're, you're, you're focused on just, you know, being a fighter and winning fights. But when you do kind of become a celebrity and – People start to care about you at a new level and people seem to care about your relationship status a lot. Are, are they want to know who you're dating? They're looking at this uh, roster. You know what I'm saying? Uh, is that become intrusive? What's it like to have people care that much about who you're dating, what the status is, where we're at in that? Because I see the pics too. And people feel like they're watching a reality show following your life. I mean, well, it feels like it. And at the end of the day, you just kind of have to embrace it. Uh, It's good problems. I look at, you know, like you have to look at perspective, right? It's good problems. Only difference is no matter what you do in life from now on, it's the world sees it. You fall in trip. A couple of people see it. I fall in trip. It becomes a meme, you know, like or whatever it is, you know, so kind of have to embrace it. You have to have some thick skin. You have to learn to take all these people's uh, opinions and just kind of just let them roll off, you know, whether they're good or bad. For the majority, everything's good, though. I have good fans. I have good people. You know, you have the, even the haters are typically like made up accounts. So it's like, oh, like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, these are made up accounts. So we're not going to see the T City uh, OnlyFans site soon. I don't. I don't need any stick pics. I don't need to see. I don't need to be no, that close no, to you, no, okay, no, bro? No, you know. No, I don't. I don't. I don't do that, man. There's no OnlyFans here. Love it. Love it. Uh, look, this is you know pay per view main event. It's the title fight, and this gets that extra build up because we talked about with the with the tough in in everything in the media. It's Las Vegas. I mean, look, this is this is as big as it gets. When you look at this matchup. The odds are pretty damn close. You are the underdog according to Las Vegas, but it's close enough where it's more or less a flip the coin fight. What's going to be the difference in the cage between you and this champion, Alexander Volkanovsky, that you've called, quote, a decision fighter? I have to finish him. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't like decisions. And what I mean by quote unquote, a decision fighter is he's, there comes a point where you get in here and you either fight or you try to win, right? And there's a difference. Um, my fans know I love to the fight. They know when I show up, you're gonna get a show. Now, one of my fights is not a show. 
And even the fight, that one fight with Farian Zambid, I decided to say, hey, you know what? Let me see if I can stick to a game plan. It was still entertaining. I can't say the same about my opponent's fights. Think about it. I fought Max once and lost. People are talking about that still. Just the level of greatness that he had and the level of heart that I've had. And like the show that it gave the people. He fought him twice and no one's talking about it. And beat him twice. And these, these are just facts. And then when you look at the paper numbers between Max and myself, we sold way more. So that's what I mean, that there's just, there's certain things to where we have to realize as fighters that we're not just fighters, but we're entertainers. Fans love me because they know I entertain them. They know when I go in there, I go to fight. I don't try to skim away with the decision versus my opponent, he plays it safe. He goes in there, plays it safe, and scores his points, runs, and then celebrates a victory. I mean, he's a chess player in the cage, I think, is maybe yeah. the best way to say it. So is the antidote to that, a guy who sets traps, who's constantly trying to stay one move ahead, is the way to beat that to be the blood and guts warrior like you were against Max Holloway or the strategic, technical brilliance we saw against Korean Zombie? We have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. You know, I don't say this to disrespect the champ. No, but is, this, is this the defining fight of your career? Or is a rematch against Max Holloway, whether it's for the belt or not, because of I know the competitor inside of you, is that the real chance, like defining fight in your career? Does it matter? Am I making, am I just being a media member no, talking no, shit no, here? No, no, it's not a media member talking shit. I, at least I don't think so, right? I look at it like, this is a for sure defining moment fight in my career for me to become the opportunity to become a world champion. That's, that's the number one thing I've always wanted. But it's bittersweet. Because now there's one man left out there say he beat the champ, right? Or he has a win over him. And then there's other people in other weight divisions that I don't like. Oh, wow. That you I want to name them? Mind, that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't mind fighting. I think they they know. There's only one guy who's talking shit about me. A one seventy pounder. Uh, he already has a fight lined up, but still, there's other fights that people don't realize how big I can get. I'm I'm five ten, five eleven, walk around one eighty five. So one seventy is not far away from me. Wow! Wow! So, so there's there's just little things that I that I think about that people are afraid of. I mean, for the uninitiated, um, who is this man you're speaking of? <laughs> I choose not to make his name relevant till he actually signs a fight because I already called his ass out. Oh. So. Right. Um. Uh, somebody else mentioned your name, and I don't say this in a trash talking sense. I say this in a respect sense. Uh, AJ McKee, the uh, fellow LA based fighter who, who had the breakthrough win for Bellator defeating Pitbull when he was asked about dream fights for him, he mentioned your name. Uh, how do you feel that call out? It feels, I mean, he's a champ in Bellator, which is good. Um, I've, I've met him, you know, we rolled one time and I think he got, uh, I don't know if it's bitterness or he says I have one over on him as in terms of a submission, I don't, I don't consider that a win in any way. Uh, I just, there was just different levels to our grappling at the time. I don't go walking around saying, ah, I submitted this guy. Never once, never will I even on camera. That's to me, it's, I even said, hey champ, like, listen, it was more along the line, like you did good, but I did this. And uh, you might want to work on this a little bit just cause it's a threat. And I showed you twice that it's a threat. And, uh, but you have great jujitsu. Uh, I was more in a, in a coaching, helping aspect. Never once do I go and walk around and say this. I seen him at fights. I always shook his hand. I said, hey, bro, we should train together. I talked to his dad. I said, hey, man, you guys will be good work together. Uh, it's always respect. Um, I, would, I would have 
no argument with saying it's a dream fight. People have dream fights all the time. I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm more than willing to step up and fight anyone. So will it happen? I doubt it. That's why it's, it's, it's hard to really pay attention to, to it as in terms of realistically something happening. I don't see it happening. I don't see him having the big enough name and me having a big enough name to make two promotions cross each other. It's, it's, we can push for it all you want, but unless you're Conor McGregor, even that, like, I, mean, I doubt you even, you're having anyone, you know, really mix two promotions. I, I don't see that happening. Unless he gets signed by the UFC, but why would he when he's making good money in Bellator? Fair. Very but fair realistically, point. it's like, we're just talking fantasy. It's like fantasy football. Shit ain't ever going to happen. Kind of likely it'll happen. Speaking of fantasy matchmaking, there's a lot of people that were hoping that you and Halle Berry had sealed the deal. I'm sorry to say it out loud, okay? Those people can, 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 you know, they can, they can, they can, uh, it's all fantasy, all right? Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, sliding out of that awkwardness to close here, uh, we can't wait for this fight. UFC 266, September 25th, Las Vegas, Alexander Volkanovsky. Um, given that this will just be your second fight in a three-year window, bad luck, injury, we know what happened. Are you going to be a champ that wants to fight every three months on the dot? How excited are you to, to, to really kickstart the prime of your career? Come, come I'm ready this to night. fight. When I'm healthy, I'm ready to fight. Fighting is never an issue. You know, like when I've shown when I was healthy, I fought like four or five times in a year. And uh, even like short notice fights against scary people. Like I took Frankie Edgar on two weeks notice. Like I took other fights on, um, you know, like it was to fight out, you know, I'm, I'm a fighter. Now I've been listening to Tiki, my manager, and we've just been doing things a little more intellectually is, is as in terms of the way I move versus just being a yes man, you know? So, that's the only thing that's changed. But I fought October and I was ready to fight February. It took one month off. And that's because I had COVID. You know? So then the fight fell through and then we remade it. And then it's, just, it's been taking a while. So I've, I've been more in situations where fights take a little bit. But that the, my willingness to fight is there. Um, my, uh, I'm there. I'm here. I'm training. I'm not going anywhere. I'm learning day in, day out. This is where this is what I've dedicated my life to. So and you got and you got the salad back. I don't know what happened ahead of that uh that that Korean zombie fight, but that wasn't you, man. The performance. I mean, it was top notch, but uh the hair's back. That's what the people want to see. Uh you may be looking at the future champ. We're gonna find out September 25th. Uh thank you, Brian Ortega, for the time for going deep. Looking forward for you to get a chance to be active to kickstart your career. And, and, and to achieve your dreams. So shout out to you, Body Armor, and everyone else. Uh, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Yeah, yeah, brother.